Why do I hear dogs? Smith both down to the bottom and now Anaya Smith goes back in motion the other way. Down the sideline. What a catch. AJ. <laughs> All out blitz. He knows it's coming. He's got the running back on the wheel route. Let's it go. And boom, like a baton in a track meet. Welcome back to the Waffle House podcast. Oh, yes, my name sir. Is, my name is Mickey McStickerson. And this is my this is my co-host Colin. His name is just Colin. And today, <laughs> just, just straight Colin. <laughs> and today we, we we will be discussing why chili and gravy are the optimal toppings for your hash browns. Oh, and why we we we, we got off to such a good start. And naturally, you had to shit on it. You had to shit the bed with this intro. I mean, you might be shitting the bed if you eat like that. Yeah, I bet you did that night. So to get some context to that story, one night we went to Waffle House, and for some reason Spencer was like, you know what? 
I want some hash browns. I was like, oh, that's cool, man. I want some hash browns too. I'm going to get some cheese. I'm going to get some ham. I'm going to get a couple of nice things on it. You know, I'm, I'm going to make it nice. Spencer looked at the menu. He said, hmm, what else can I get? And then he looked at me. He said, I want all that shit. And all of a sudden, he legitimately ordered it. It was, it was scattered, covered, smoked, grilled, uh, killed, murdered, slaughtered. I mean, every damn code word that, that, that Waffle House has, they put all the toppings on it. Was Except disgusting. tomatoes. That's Except the only thing I don't want is tomatoes. Yeah, that's where he drew the line. Was but now what you do, reason. you can go to Waffle House. They have the bowls, the hash brown bowls where they'll put like steak in it. Mm-hmm. So you get steak, but then you get all the other stuff you put in hash browns, and then you top it with chili and gravy. Mm. Delicious. Mm, absolutely. No, fuck that. <laughs> I don't know why I said absolutely fuck that. I don't know what the hell is wrong with you with your uh, with your Waffle House. I, I haven't have, did, been doing chili and gravy ever, here recently. Did you ever do that again after that after that one night we did that whole? Oh, I've done it a bunch of times, but I only do chili now. I don't do chili and gravy anymore. Aren't you the same person that once got like a grape chocolate Sprite or some Chocolate stuff? cherry grape Coke. It's Sonic during happy hour. Spencer, it came from a Sonic commercial. Spencer, and I don't every, they had that same reaction that you do, but every single person I've ever made try that drink said it's delicious. Chocolate, cherry, grape, Coke. Since it's, I don't think we can keep delicious. having a, a food-themed named podcast knowing the things I know about you. <laughs> I don't think we could keep it's doing so good. It. We got to rebrand, man. Well, hey, what did you think of that? What did you think of the uh, the games? What happened last weekend? What, it's all a blur. Uh, what a fantastic weekend! Of college football, we had. Oh my God! You know, I texted you during that during, during the A and M game, which obviously is what we're most excited about. Cue all the things we're wearing. Um, I texted you in that game, and I said to you, and if, if you check the description, this is exactly what I put in the description. I texted you. Remember the year two thousand eight? And you said, "Okay, what's that about? Do you mean two thousand seven? Because you were probably thinking the crazy two thousand seven year." And I said, to, "I said to you, no. I said." 2008. Remember that? Remember that? And this is before the game was over. I just, I, I wanted you to note that year. As soon as the game ended, what did I tell you? You tell, you told me that was the last time a number one team lost to an unranked team. The last. Do you know time. what game it was? Because uh, I do. It was USC, right? It wasn't USC. It was losing. Oregon State beat U. Uh, Oregon State beat USC. The Badgers taking them downtown. But yeah, the it is the Beavers. I, I get the, I, yes, Wisconsin the Badgers, the Beavers. Yes, fans of chainsaws, as yes, we learned. One hundred percent. So <laughs> that was the last time that's happened. It's been thirteen years since an unranked team has top number one. Uh, but we saw it this weekend, and honestly, it was because A and M probably should be ranked despite their losses. And this is. This oh, they're number twenty one right now. Yeah, and they and they are, of course. But during that time, I felt they were still. This was the A and M we team. wanted. This was the A and M. This is this the A and M we expected. This is the A and M that that Texas A and M is paying Jimbo Fisher to, to, to. This is this is the shape he's supposed to have them boys in for the price that they're paying for him, right? Um, and this this was this is what they wanted. They wanted to beat Nick Saban. He's the first assistant, the first Saban apple to fall from the tree. That actually and he did it on his birthday. And he did it on his birthday, which is which. Funny enough, I don't know if you realize this or not. Same score was last year on his birthday that they beat Florida 41 38 I don't know it's some it's some sort of reverse curse. don't get if you play a Kyle Field don't get tied 38 38 you're just gonna lose just don't do it don't get tied 38 38 don't go to overtime and don't play him on Jimbo's birthday those yeah. are what you don't want to do but anyway was, aside from AM upsetting number one Alabama which we were all super hyped for Daryl I gotta tell you a funny thing about that game after I get to, anyway the other games of the day were fantastic yeah all very competitive and Ole like Miss, we were com- Ole Miss and, and Arkansas. Ole, and Arkansas. Oh my God. I got thoughts about that game, but I'm going to talk about the Texas OU game real quick. That game was nuts. It like, was nuts. We were complaining oh. last week that game day should have been in Iowa City for Penn State and Iowa. After watching the UT OU game, I'm glad they were there. Yeah. Like it made no, once it, I was watching game day, it made well, sense that they were there. And they always want to go to the state fair, right? That's always a big draw yeah. to be able to have it there. It's a better location. And by the way, before we get too far, I want to shout everybody in the chat. We got Will, Afro Man 112, Bonsai, Steven, good to see you, Jack, my boy, um, and a couple more in there as well. So glad you guys are here. Hope you're doing well. If you're if you're lurking, make sure you uh just pop that's in three so and know. then uh, the fourth one is me because you know I'm always oh in that's there. right okay um, well never mind uh, I'm, I'm gonna pretend you're somebody else <laughs> still, yeah still waiting on uh what's so, my boy Sean yeah Sean Winters and um oh, this guy Kent Kent, Kent. I, 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 I almost said Keith but um but yeah man it's it's, a, it's an exciting time so but, yes that the, game was. What was your thoughts Texas. on the Texas game? Do you think OU came back and won, or do you think Texas blew it? Both. Both. Truly um, both. Okay. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, Daryl. I was watching this game, and, like, there was this little tickle in the back of my head, like, right here. 
And I was like, Was it the same it, tickle that, that said Auburn was going to beat Georgia? Because that was a different no, tickle. I didn't say Auburn was going to beat Georgia. I said Auburn was going might do something against Georgia. Oh, okay. But it was like this. And well, it, it didn't it win. That's my, what you were talking about doing. It wanted my hand to like make this kind of motion right here, but like I didn't do it. Because like it gave me flashback. Obviously, it, people who know me in real life know I used to be a big UT fan. And so, Brought contrary you back a little to the bit, shirt huh? I'm wearing, and, and I was like, damn. Hey, what's and going like, on, Sean? I think we were. <laughs> What's up, Sean? We were just talking about you. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, and so I was like, I was like, is tech like we I think we've been sleeping on Texas a little bit. They got rocked by Arkansas. Well, but this Texas team is legitimately good, I think. Well, Texas so is honestly out. to me, to me, man, Texas is morphing into Oklahoma. Their defense struggles, but they put up 28 in the first quarter. First quarter. First quarter. And they didn't put up 28 for the rest of the game, by the way. It was they, 14 to nothing two minutes into the game. Yes. Yes. They scored 75 yards on the first play from scrimmage, kicked it to OU, and then made OU punt. Then they blocked the punt on the five, and B. John Robinson scored. It was yeah. nuts. And you know what? I was so impressed. And there was one play. I don't I don't have it pulled up, but my play of the week was almost going to be. There was a nice little rub, or excuse me, a little pick play um, that they did right on the goal line. It was just the most pretty pass um, from Casey Thompson. It was just a little pick. Boom, he pops out. It was such... Such good play calling from Sark. The one he put it, over 18. The one he put over 18. Said such such beautiful play calling, right? I mean, Sark obviously has them boys looking good on offense, but it just makes you wonder sort of why they why they stalled out the rest of the game. You know, they were you know able to score, was? but you know what it was? What's Caleb that? Williams. Oh, he's, like look, he's different. He's built o- different. Oklahoma fans, if you were in the stands screaming "F you, Rattler," you're trash. You're a trash fan. You know, you shouldn't be yelling that at a college football player. Yeah, but I mean, on the flip side, y'all said we want Caleb. You got him now, and he's really good. And, and how about so. how about Lincoln Riley? First of all, some of the weird things he did in this game. He decides all of a sudden on that two point play to tie it up. He's gonna after after Spencer Rattler hasn't been in the game. I guess it's probably just he knew the two point plays better, right? It, it had to be just he had more practice with the two point plays that he put him in. But how weird was it that he went in, fans booed him, and then he scored? I don't know how you approach this coming weekend if you're Lincoln Riley if, because you, if you're Lincoln Riley and you believe in Spencer Rattler, you let you put Spencer Rattler to start this weekend. I agree. Get his confidence back up. Well, and, and it's the same. Honestly, it's the same conundrum that you have that, that you know that Texas had with with Hudson Card and with um, with Casey, Casey Thompson, Thompson. Because again, on paper, Hudson Card may be the better quarterback. On paper, Spencer Rattler may be the better quarterback. But when you put these other guys in, you put in Casey Thompson, you put in. Um, I'm already blank on Caleb the other, Williams. Caleb Williams in. It's such, it's such a basic name. I was I was expecting something more. When you put these guys in, good things happen, right? And that was exactly yeah. what Sarkeesian said, and which is he's maybe was, not the best in practice. He doesn't practice the best, but when he gets in the game, things happen. He's some player. players just have it. Some, some players, players just, just can, they can turn it on. But and Sean, so, Sean Agri, it, it was it was just fireworks back and forth. It was it was a, it was a tennis match. <laughs> and like the third and eighteen, when Caleb Williams, I mean, they had no business getting a first down on this play. And that sixty-yard touchdown run he had. Just and then he like popped through the middle. Yeah. He like stopped yeah. for like a second. He was like, "Oh shit, I'm in the open," and he started hauling ass. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it's it's mind blowing to me that 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 could happen. Um, yeah. But it, it's it's exactly what you would expect in that rivalry. It was one hell of a Red River showdown. Uh, it was one that you know will be talked about for years to come. Pro- was it? What it was probably the biggest the biggest comeback in the history of the rivalry. Yes, it has to it be was. right because they blew a twenty one so. point lead, lead at one point. It's unheard yeah. of. Texas gave people were making memes. They were like, Texas gave up a 21 point lead and like a 17 point lead. And a, yeah, they gave up back. several really leads, fun. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of look at the stats of the game now because it, it they, was both, nuts. they both had like over 600 yards of offense. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It was some ridiculous stuff. And then, and that was the first game of the day. Mm-hmm. That was how we started, started Saturday. We weren't even getting started yeah. yet. We were just getting started, rather. But also, for whatever stupid reason, Ole Miss and Arkansas was on at the same time. So it was like, why? Well, I don't know why Ole Miss and Arkansas wasn't in the 230 slot. Like, Boy, that was a damn good game. And just real quick, one last thing on the Oklahoma game. Look at this. Look at this win probability. It starts out with OU, then Texas scores, scores. And the entire game, Texas is supposed to win this thing at one point. At this point, they have an 82% chance to win, 90%, 95, 98 then all of a sudden, right here, when, to, when OU scores again against that two-point conversion, all the momentum, you could just tell it was leaving. Just look at this crazy win. Pro- just last second, just swaps over like that. 
Um, what, what a game, right? And, and, yeah, and, and it I, happens we're like gonna, that. We're, obviously, we're going to talk about the matchups this weekend, but I think that this loss on, it does a lot to Texas. I think it's going to affect the way they play against the Cowboys oh, this weekend. I got some thoughts. We'll get to it in a little bit. Yeah. Somebody said this This is, This might as well have been Oklahoma's week one. Yeah. Because well, exactly. I think I think Texas just woke up a monster. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. And, and, and We've been the, sleeping on OU all year, but they've been finding ways to win games. I think Texas might have just woke up well, sleeping giant, right? And and it just you look at the, you look at OU's schedule and you go, okay, well, who's going to stop them? Maybe maybe they Nobody. get squashed. Maybe they get squashed and and you know maybe they get into number four, number three. Maybe they get squashed by Iowa. Maybe they get squashed by Alabama. Maybe they get squashed by Georgia. But the point yeah. is, they're probably going to make it in because who can stop them? Usually, it's Texas, right? Yeah. Maybe they, maybe they lose projection. the Big Twelve championship. Who knows? Yeah. I saw a bowl projection because they they always do the SEC bowl projections, right? That had Alabama and Texas in the Sugar Bowl, and I was like, "I'd watch it. That, I would yeah. love to watch that game." Texas oh, wants too. to play in the Big Twelve, you know. You want? You mean in the SEC? I'm, the big yes, the big the SEC. I'm sorry, I've, I've had a very um, tough week. Yeah. So, but and then you know, Ole Miss, Ole Miss Arkansas. Ole Miss Arkansas was thought. great. Great game. Not a whole lot of defense for SEC teams. No. For 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 an Arkansas team that's been playing great, great defense all year, they didn't have any of it well, this week. And you have to and, be honest, man. And uh, Ole Miss never had a defense. They just outscore people. That, um, right, exactly. So here's the thing, right? Hey, they they got their popcorn ready. Let me just tell you something. They had their popcorn ready. <laughs> they had their popcorn ready. In almost every situation in a game, mm-hmm. I am of the mind that you take your points – Mm. and live to play another day. Sure. You live to play another down. We talked about this two years ago when Clem, when North Carolina almost beat Clemson, when I said they should have kicked that extra point. And I right? disagreed with you. And we disagreed about that. I don't entirely disagree with the call to go for two by Sam Pittman. Because they weren't stopping. They weren't stopping Matt Corral. He was playing they, out of his mind. They weren't going to stop Matt no. Corral. And that, that was my same level. My, that was my same. My was my same thought last year or year before last. Two years ago. Trevor, yeah, with Trevor Lawrence. You're not stopping him, right? You have. To well, here's my thing. Now. Here's the situation that I thought about this week, right? The only loss at the time on Arkansas's record was Georgia, right? A team from the East. Mm-hmm. So if you kick this extra point and live to play for overtime and maybe give your defense a shot to maybe get one stop on Matt Corral in overtime, Mm -hmm. you still have an outside chance if you can pull a rabbit out of your ass and beat Alabama to make it to Atlanta in the SEC championship. 100%. So I I think in the heat, in the heat of the moment, Sam Pittman may not have had all that in his head. I mean, he's a smart guy. I'm sure he did. But they had the momentum. They had just scored. Yeah. And I think if you watch that playback, if KJ throws it to zero, they probably score. But that's just the way I thought about that game this week. You know, there was, I think that was more on the line than just this game. And, you know, now Ole Miss has an outside shot to go to Atlanta because their only loss is Alabama. And Alabama just lost. Mm -hmm. So now we need like Auburn to win the Iron Bowl and Ole Miss is going to go to Atlanta. (laughs) Right. We need it. And, you know, it's going to be one of those weird things. And we'll talk, we may talk about this in a bit, but the SEC. It's drunk. It's drunk, as as the title shows. We have teams losing to teams that don't that shouldn't they have shouldn't have. And first of all, A and M beating Alabama throws everything into a kink because look who's beat A and M and look who Alabama will probably beat. Yeah. You know, so it's it's going it's it's confusing. But there is a very possible, very real possibility that if Alabama loses to Auburn and then A and M wins out and then A and M and meaning A and M beats Ole Miss, there's a weird possible way that they could win the three way tie type. They, there would type be shit. right that there would be a tie or some way for the SEC West. Who knows how that's going to play out? But it it could be yeah. a weird year. We're going to keep our eyes on it. But I, to be honest with you, man, this Ole Miss game was phenomenal. Uh, I, I like I said, Matt Corral was playing out of his mind. KJ Jefferson, KJ Jefferson is the most calm I've ever seen anyone in the pocket before. He literally would just took, take take the take the snap and just stand there, and he just you know a lot of quarterbacks bounce. They kind of do this. He just stood there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then he got ready to throw. It was it was a great game. Yeah. KJ Jefferson is one of a kind. And honestly, that two point play when I, I I was going to make it the play of the week because I wanted to sort of look what happened. Um, but honestly, I couldn't I couldn't tell. It looked like a missed assignment on the line. But even if that block gets picked up, I don't know where you go with the ball because they just. Ole Miss just wasn't fooled. It looked like it was going to be some yeah. kind of weird trick where you sneak somebody else. Ole Miss they just, just didn't have fooled. like a crazy voodoo play, and they right. just didn't fool them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you, I think your, uh, I really think your um, 
Sean says play for the win on the road. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Sean. Yeah, go for go for um, the road. You got the win. One play. If if you, if at any point you tell me that you're one play away from winning this game, you give me that play, right? But Arkansas missed a field goal in this game that would have given them the win. Well, and that's it's, that's football, you know. That you know that's football. So like Arkansas doesn't miss that field goal. Arkansas is five and one right now, mm-hmm. and the other only loss is to Georgia. So, you know, I just. Yeah. It, it, this know. Arkansas program is on the way up. Well, and you Sam look at Pittman it. Sam Pittman is doing you, a phenomenal job. And, 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 you get, and, and give, Arkansas and give, might end up in the Sugar Bowl. Sure. And, and give credit to Sam Pittman. You've got to have nuts of steel to to, to be to on the road go for that, right? But yeah. if, you, if you pull it off, you're a hero. And, of course, if you miss it, then everybody hates you. But it's one of those things, man. Sometimes you just got to roll the dice. Oh, I don't it's, hate it's, him. It's, I think it was a ballsy call. No, I think, he, I think he's got the program going in the right direction regardless because they're in every single one of these games. For sure. Except for Georgia, but no one's going to be in that game. And, of course... Speaking of last week, before we get into next week, or tomorrow rather, uh, we got to talk about this AM game, man. What I sat and watched that whole damn thing. I don't know so about you. Daryl, I got I to tell you a true thing. Okay, tell me a true thing. Um, before the kickoff, your wife sent me a text message. <laughs> I know where this is going. <laughs> and it said, it said, Spencer, I need you to please not give my husband any hope right now because if AM does well in this game and then loses i don't know if his heart can take it or something to that effect <laughs> yeah. and yes. i was like trying to like like when i was texting you i was like all right i was like what are your expectations for this game that's that i she mm-hmm. sent me that and i immediately you were checking in that. on me <laughs> and, and i was like all right all right because we both said on this show live on air we were like this is about to be a massacre like we thought Bama oh, was yeah. going to come in and do no. Bama things, right? The world thought that. No one had AM in this. Have game. you seen the Stephen A. Smith video? The little no, dance I video? I haven't. I need to watch that. He, w- he, w- he was like, they going to get beat down. A <laughs> massacre is coming. And then they like zoomed in, and then it's all the AM players dancing in the locker room after <laughs> <laughs> after the game. It's so good. All right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, that's the first thing I'm doing when I get off the stream. Um, anyway, that's amazing. So, so, but then we go down. AM goes down and they get the field goal, right? Sure. And I was like, all right, I'll take a field goal. And I texted you that. I was like, I'm fine with a field goal. Yeah, sure. Score on the opening drive. And then Stop the Alabama clock. <laughs> goes down. And, yeah. Alabama goes down, scores a touchdown. I was like, all right, cool, man. And then AM went down and scored that long, that, that pass to Jalen Watermeyer. When like, that happened, I was like, what what game am I watching? What, what the? I was like, what's going on? Yeah, okay. It was, blown, then, it was blown coverage, whatever, you know. Okay, but uh, Alabama had a lot of blown coverages in this game. Anyway, um, We're and then so, that. and then so, uh, they had that handoff where where Brian Robinson just missed the ball and A and M picked the fumble up, and I was like, that was when I thought there might, that that was when I had the thought. We're going I was to like, wait a second, wait a <laughs> second. And I was like, oh no, I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna live up to what Callie needs me to do because they're playing really good yeah, right now. Yeah, and she texted me, she's like, what is happening? And I was like, oh my god. Well, and you know what? That was the moment I realized that AM was gonna win because I thought, of course, the year they would win uh-huh. is the year it doesn't matter. The year their playoff hopes are just about shot, of course, they're going to win this one, right? They'll and lose next we, year when they're when they're back in but the like, position, but but like it's almost better as an up like. You want your team to do better, but if you're going to upset somebody, you want your team to kind of yeah, suck. Do it. Right. Yeah. So, like, they did that and they go down and they score that touchdown. And I was like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then they Alabama went down and kicked the field goal. And then Spiller had that run where he put it over the goal line and it was 24 to that 10. Was and the I was most, like, what a man to make that run, to make that play, too. To be to be upside down and be like, no, nope, no, nope, we're going to score. And then reach the ball and out then, like that. And then. Alabama did storm back in a major way. Right. And like we texted each other. When they got that two point conversion, I thought the game was over. I was yeah, like, shit. Yeah. Well, look, I was real, like, real quick, let's rewind for a second because remember at halftime, we were going into half and it was 24 to 10. And I remember just being pissed as so damn mad because we were only up 14. It's a, it's it's a it's a miracle that Alabama playing Alabama, you even up 14, you don't feel like you're winning. No. You, and like does, we, but we said on this like show enough. either last week or two weeks ago, if you're going to beat Alabama, you got to get on them and you got to get on them you quick. You got to get on them quick, exactly. And, 
They That's showed what a, they, did. They showed a stat one time during the game that like Alabama had not trailed going into the second quarter since you know like a couple years. They ago hadn't trailed something. like at yeah, all. Yeah, in, in like a hundred games or some shit like that. And then Sean, yes, any no, not a hundred games, but like well, it was a while. It was a long. It was yeah. a while. No, I think I think it was like a hundred quarters or something. I don't know. It was yeah, hundred quarters or like something like that. Yeah. Um, and then and Sean so, says anytime you beat Bama, it's worth it. Yeah, exactly, man. You, the, the win, the win there's the win there is a win regardless of what your season is looking yeah. like. Yeah. And so it's just. And they kept going, and then they got that one. They got the two point conversion. I was like, "Crap!" Yeah. Now when and they went they came, up, I thought, then, mm, "We need, we need something. We need, we need." Yeah. Them. And then Zach Calzada just turned into freaking Iron Man and was like, "All right, he, cool." He came out. He, he came out the. Uh, he came out the tent like, "All right, here we go. Let's go." I'm Johnny Manziel now. <laughs> hey, and then he just stood in the pocket and threw a pass to Anaya Smith. Touchdown! So, and got his knees blown out. So that let me let me get to the play of the week. The first thing I want to say about this game is that this is a game of adjustments. What have, what have I always preached to you every time we're doing this show? What makes Nick Saban a league? What make, adjustments? It, adjustments. Being able to have a team that adjusts to what the other team is doing, and that's exactly what you saw. Um, if you look at this game, I'm trying to like zoom into this, but I can't find a, a good whatever. Uh, and the, I'm just going to explain it. In the first half, of course, it was 24 to 10. AM scores 24. Uh, Alabama, the defense was able to hold them to 10. Everything's great. In the second half, Alabama scored 28 points. That is a huge adjustment for that defense, right? And you'll notice that in the third quarter, uh, AM scored one touchdown, which is very different than the three that they scored in the first quarter in the first half. What makes me happy as an AM fan is the fact that AM adjusted to the adjustments. Even after they went up 31 38 or 38 31, AM was still able to walk down the field and score. Zach, Cal- that Zach Calzada just played out of his mind. He was placing balls really well. Um, and you asked me earlier. And 14 couldn't cover Anaya Smith to and, save his life. Right. And 14 couldn't cover him. Uh, and we'll talk about that actually. So, real quick, my guy, you, you asked me, and I'll play this so that you can actually hear it on your end, maybe. Um, the the title of this stream was a bat- uh, like a baton and a track race. I don't know if, how much you remember, but the um, A and M game a couple years ago when Johnny Manziel was there, and you, I don't know if you remember. You this say play. a couple. It was nine years ago, Daryl. <sighs> let's not let's not talk about that. <laughs> Here's a handoff, play action. Johnny Manziel goes over the top. Ryan Swope on a wheel route, grabs Gets him. The- absolute tar knocked out of it. And then this call from Gary Danielson. If you guys should be able to hear this at home, listen very closely. Wow! A wheel route, and he put it like a baton in a track race. Like a baton in a track race, he said that passes like. And now, funny enough, on a very similar play uh, this year, this past weekend, very similar play, Zach Calzada's back in the pocket. You're going to see a very similar look, Okay. Uh, Anaya Smith is going to go out here, out to the flat. He's going to basically just occupy the space for a very good reason. And then, of course, um, you're going, he's going to come like, oh, let me, oh, I need to get my pencil. Ha <laughs> Hang on. Let me get my, uh, I got the wrong thing up. Here we go. So this is the previous play. Okay. What's, what's cool about this play and the reason this play works, and I'll just play it real quick, is that uh, Anaya Smith comes around. Uh, Devon A. Chain goes out and then just places the ball just perfectly over the two Alabama defenders. Almost, a very, not the exact same play, but a very similar play, and it works for some of the same reasons. And the cool thing about that, by the way, was this call t- later on towards the end of it. Hang on. Coming. He's got the running back on the wheel route. And Let's go. And boom, like a baton in a track race. Like a baton in a track race. Almost the exact same line. But anyways, to actually analyze the play, I just thought that was cool. The history sort of repeated itself there. That was a nice little just just touch of uh, of lore, I guess. But the reason this play works so well is because of Anaya Smith. Anaya Smith, as you know, has world-class speed, as everyone likes to say. He's going to go occupy this space in the flat, which if you're an Alabama defender, you have to respect that. You can't. It's going to be hard to beat him in space. If he is in space, you got to be there, right? So what's going to happen is he's going to go over here. This, um, this corner is going to go up here and play safety. This safety is going to drop down because he has to actually, I believe it's this guy, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because he's covering him. This guy's got to drop down and actually respect that space. So we're going to play out. Both down to the bottom and now and I Smith goes back. Hang on, let me back it up some. I had to mute this. So he's going to drop. And the reason, number two, this is number two here. Number two is on Anaya Smith. He has to he has to watch out for him, right? So he has to respect this space, which allows the Von A chain to just run right past him. And then, of course, Calzada. And all of a sudden, by the way, this opening that you get right here, all this space, 
this is the this is what good play calling is going to get you. Good play calling creates these openings. It's tight, especially against an Alabama defense. But my God, Zach Calzada drops it right in the bucket, and that is beautiful on a nice little wheel route. Very similar concept to the play uh, that worked last time, and the reason that worked because they had to respect Mike Evans actually on that play. Um, he dropped. He goes. He basically crosses to the middle of the field. The safety has the drop, and it opens up that big space for Johnny to drop it in there. Very similar concept, and it was just cool to see all these years later history almost sort of repeat itself you feel me yeah speaking of ryan swope i will forever be mad that he was not on the cover of ncaa 14 yeah, and i'm Mad robinson i'm salty as hell about it still it, it hurts yeah i think they should put him on the cover of the new games <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm sure everybody remembers ryan swope and not just AM fans you know yeah because he never he couldn't even go if, to the NFL if not ryan swope fun. make it johnny manziel yeah Actually, I don't think anybody should be on the cover when the new game comes out. Nobody should be on the cover. Yeah, that's. But then the next a, year, put somebody on the cover. I think you should do like a like a collage of all the bigger players. You know, just all the Heisman winners since the last game came out. Something like that, or but I would love it if it was just like a Star Wars poster. You know how they have like a bunch of different faces on there, like you know, yeah. like even like the Avengers Endgame poster where it has all the important all the important super. Just do the same thing, but all the important players all on there, just in this big crazy artsy collage. I but, I had a play suggested. Um, All right, that me. I thought about uh, it's from say it's from the A and M game, and I thought it might have been the one that you picked, but uh, it was A and M's second touchdown mm. to Anaya Smith. They ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball. Get to the goal line, fake to Isaiah Spiller, and just toss it over the top to Anaya mm. Smith in the end zone. Mm. I thought that was the play because, like we were talking about, if you can run the ball, you can pass the ball. Yes. So. Well, that's exactly why it worked, right? And I'll go ahead and put it up because so that everyone can see kind of what you're talking about. But yeah, that's exactly why that play worked because the linebackers drop. They have to respect the run because Isaiah Spiller has been... Um, is that been, man? Is is that... He's a grown man. He is that man. He is every man. He is exactly what uh, you expect him to be. Hang on, let me find it. Oh, it, no. It? Yeah, this is it. Team more. If you heard me just exclaim, oh, no. What happened? The Astros. Um, gotcha. Yeah, they're uh, game one ALCS Astros uh, Red Sox in Houston. Red Sox are up three to one in the third inning. Ooh, you hate to see it. That's okay. There's a lot of football, a lot of baseball to be played. But anyways, yeah, same play. Oh, this isn't it. This is that pick. I want the one where they go up 17-10. Oh shoot! Hang on. <laughs> Keep talking. I'm gonna find it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there it is. Okay. I just want to shout out the Astros. Um, uh, obviously, I had to put the hat on. Uh, what was I about to say? Let's see. Um, here's a the play, by the way. Live. Got a couple games live right now. We get Clemson, Clemson at Syracuse. They're in the third quarter. Clemson's only up 14 to 7. And we got Marshall at North Texas. Yeah, by the way, have you ever seen a face mask called on a quarterback? No, I haven't. It happened tonight. It happened in that Clemson Syracuse game. The Syracuse quarterback was running and he went to go like stiff arm somebody. And instead of just regularly stiff arming, he grabbed the face mask and like pushed him back. So they called oh. on that. Never oh. seen that before. Because it happened twice in the AM Alabama game. I got to ask you mm. how in the blue hell uh -huh. does the defense get called for delay a game? Because it happened twice. Disconcerting to signals. In this game. Disconcerting signals. It's so what loud. What does that mean? So it's so loud, right, in Kyle Field that the clapping a lot of times is how the quarterback signals, hey, snap the ball. Like that is the that's the thing. So the silent the, count. Right. It's, but by the defense is doing that, their argument is that, hey, you know, you're trying to to, to throw them off. They that's, never showed the defense doing anything. Well, I saw it, so I I knew exactly whenever when the when they replayed it, I knew what they were talking about. So, do I agree with the call? Technically, it's like yeah, it's like is it there's there's a foul in basketball that they also never call. It's like too many men in the paint or something like that. Like you can only have three like three players. seconds in the three yeah, seconds in the lane or something right. like that. It's, it's one of those it's one of those fouls that although technically there is never called because it's just one of those. Because I heard one of the announcers say I haven't seen that in five years. Right, and it, it happened it just, twice. Right, it just never gets called. So what it, say what you will about that. The next play ended up being a, being a stop goal line stop, which by the way is how AM won this game. Zach Calzada, of course, was phenomenal, but their defense absolutely also, just Yeah, teed defense off. played like and they kept them out of the end zone. Uh, on the the last touchdown that Alabama scored, they got away with murder on that play. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know you're talking the one about. where Jamison Williams was wide they open. They weren't set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. were not set at all, but, and no flag came out. Dog, it doesn't matter. We got that W. Uh, exactly. Like, ain't it even winning, so it didn't matter. Yeah. 
But like, also, can we talk just a little bit about the like the game? Like, let's look at let's look at what Alabama's done, what they've been this year. Mm. They've been really good. They've been Alabama. But some people say they don't feel like the Alabama of old. Look at some of their games and look at what Jamison Williams, just Jamison Williams has done for them. Mm. And if they didn't have him, what would they be right now? Like, well, they could still be Alabama. Alabama is always going to be good. But so Alabama, I, you know, I heard this argument that Jamison Williams, like because he's there, has changed the outcomes of so many games. You know, that's that's entirely possible. Um, I saw an interesting stat earlier, uh, and I don't have it. I don't have it ready to show, but I can paraphrase what I saw. Is that Nick Saban or Alabama under Nick Saban has sort of gone over has undergone a metamorphosis in defense over the past couple of years? His his first couple of years in Alabama, of course, you know he's rebuilding. He's making this. He's making something out of this program. They had mm-hmm. you know fine defenses. They were like tied for 40th, tied for 26th, tied for 13th, and overall defense. Then there's a couple of years where it's like first and overall defense, first, second, fourth, first, second. Like- third. And then, in recent, and keep in mind, of course, that's when they're winning the championships. But keep in mind, they're still winning after that point, and yet the defense is continually third, fourth, tenth, twelfth, twenty-sixth. The defenses are getting historically because, worse compared because to the SEC is an offense league now. Because that's right, and that is that is sort of the big difference. That is that is the it's as the game is evolving. So is Nick Saban. He's he's gone to the huddle, which is not necessarily a thing he used to do. Essentially, what Georgia, what you're seeing Georgia is right now, this defensive powerhouse. Where maybe it's like they, they don't plucked them the out of the middle middle of the 2000s. It, it, that's, it, it, the they are they are what Georgia is right now is like a 2014 2013 Alabama. That's exactly 2011 what Alabama. 20, that defense was nuts. It's just stout and not really doing anything crazy on the offensive side of the ball. But they're stout. Sean says this is not the same Bama team. The Florida game is the proof they duped us into thinking Florida was good because they played Bama real tight. I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> Water break. We can't both drink at the same time. Um, yeah, no, I totally agree with you, Sean. It's 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 it's, it's it is the fun of college football to me is that you just get really not just college football, but just football in general is you you get clued in each week. And try to piece together what a team is slash isn't. And Florida the- was, like I said, Florida was a missed extra point away from possibly winning that game. And Kentucky, by the way, was he beat Florida. We'll get to Kentucky in a minute. And uh, Kentucky put the fucking pan- <laughs> pulled the pants down on Alabama this weekend and just. Ca- you mean LSU? I, I'm sorry, LSU this beat past the weekend. Dog snot out of LSU, man. And, I was. Oof. Tra- I had no pre- interest in watching that game. <laughs> Appreciate you, Trey. Yeah, I, I had a feeling you wouldn't considering that the A and M game was on there as well. But um, well, hey, man, let's make some predictions. I got. I, I, I really prepared today. I'm I'm back into this. I feel good about college football again after what happened this week. Right. I, I remember that I can feel alive doing this. So here we are. Um, All right. You want to go um, in order? Yeah, we'll go in order. All right, brother. Uh, this Saturday at 11 a.m., which is a weird time for this game to be kicking off. We got number 20 Florida coming to Death Valley to play against LSU. Uh, this game, they were talking about rivalry trophies with this game. Mm. Uh, they play for a bag of teeth and a golden football cleat. Um, I'm about to say, they ought, thrown, they, ought, they ought to play for a football cleat. That's what they need to be playing for I was for thrown now. by Florida <laughs> defensive player. Um, yeah, uh, this is not going to be close. Florida by a really whole think bunch. So. LSU, yeah, LSU's bad. Derek Stingley's out for the year. Elias Ricks is out for the year. Kayshawn Boutte is out for the year. Yeah. Uh, I think this team has quit on Coach Orgeron. And because they know what's coming. Well, they just got yeah. manhandled by Kentucky. I don't think Florida is maybe not what we thought Florida was, but they'll win this game. Um, Trey says, uh, has there been a mad, crazy echo established? Maybe just me. I don't know. Is there a crazy mad echo? Maybe there is. Um, why would that be there if that is the case? Oh, I know what he's talking about. I don't know why that is. It's... It just is. It's it's something to do with my computer. But yeah, Spencer okay. will probably echo a little bit, like the tiniest little bit, and I will echo uh, none, or at least I shouldn't. Can't figure it out. I'm not sure why it's a thing, but it is. Maybe it's it my microphone. I don't know. No, it's not you, because it also happens to my music when I play music. But that's fine. Well, you know, okay. you, you, you're just. But yeah, yeah I, but I, so you got LSU going down. You think Gators? You think yeah. Florida's going to win? Gators. Like, I don't think this is. Yeah, I got this. I don't 20, think this is much to talk about. I got this twenty-eight. Uh, I, I got, I got, I got the Gators winning this twenty-eight to twenty. 
Um, I do think that uh, LSU comes out hot early. I think they might even get up like 13. 11 a.m. kickoff in Death Valley. Yeah, I know. All the LSU fans are still going to be hung over from the oh, night before. <laughs> say they're going to be hung over. No one's going to be cheering no, at this no, freaking no. game. No, hell no. So, yeah, I don't know. But, you know, it, it, you, you look at it as a home game. It could be a revenge game. To me, this might, and we've been saying this every week, this might be the game where, where Ed Orgeron really gets in hot water. But this this is one that he He's already win. in hot water. Ed Orgeron's done. Yeah, but at some point you draw a line and go, there's no way he can save the season. If he wins this game... He might save himself. We'll see, but I don't. I don't see it happening, uh, which is a shame considering all the success he had with Joe Burrow. But clearly, that was all Joe Burrow. So, like I said, he caught lightning in a bottle. Mm. Joe Brady won that championship, not not Coach Orgeron. That's exactly right. Um, but then, he, but the, that being said, that's still fun. If you're an LSU fan, that was still a wonderful year, and nothing can take that away from y'all. You know. Yeah. And then we got uh, the Aggies, mm-hmm. red hot Aggies, going to play Mizzou. We're going to see Again, how they are. I don't think there's much to talk about this one. I think Aggies win by a bunch. Um, um, we'll see, man. So here, here, here's my thoughts on this game, right? Uh, what this past weekend revealed to me. Is there an Alabama? Will there be an Alabama hangover for a and I don't think will, so. Will there be an Alabama hangover? But also think about Missouri is, is averaging 38 points a game. Now you look at who they've played. The, the, their biggest game was really against Tennessee, and they lost by quite a bit. By a bunch. Well, and it was also Kentucky. They lost it. They only lost it to Kentucky by a touchdown. So the t- I think the, the deal with Mizzou is that the talent is there, um, but their defense is also letting up like 38 points a game. So the bottom line is, it, it's going to. I, I don't think. I think. I think. A&M's A&M, defense is better than Mizzou's defense. I think. And so I don't yeah. think. A and M's gonna let Mizzou score that many points. Right, I think that's gonna be the bottom line, and that's that's kind of the conclusion I got to after the Bama game was that A and M all year, you're looking at they're only allowing 16 points a game on average right now, especially with their giant with their crazy performance at Colorado, with their performance against Alabama, keeping them out of the red zone with three maybe four times I believe, um, and keep holding them to a field goal, which is which is what won them the game. They're playing with a top 10 defense, and they have been playing with a top 10 defense all year. It's the offense mm-hmm. that has to catch up. Maybe top five if the if the offense will stay on the field longer and keep the defense rested. So yeah. we'll see. I think the sky's the limit for their defense. I think this is a low-scoring game. Um, for Well, actually, I take that back. I was reading the wrong score. <laughs> I, think, I think A&M gets it 31 to 13. Yeah. I think A&M's going to put up points, and Mizzou really won't. Uh, also, this week is like... This week is kind of calm. Like everything's just kind of academic, right? Like, well, right, and it's you know all the fireworks were last weekend. Yeah. So like, we, we still got some good ones though. You know, we still got yeah. George is going to have a fun one. We'll keep talking about it. Yeah. Um, but Sean, it's, uh, Sean says Aggies win big. Uh, I think so too. And then Sean also says Florida for me Gators aren't great, but LSU looks rough. Yeah. I think I think I think the Gators are going to do just enough to get by because Dan Mullen, even after whatever they were they were being. They were beating Vanderbilt like 20 to zip going into the half a couple weeks ago or last week, and he was still upset. Like, he wouldn't even – I think when they interviewed him before the half, he was like, we're playing terrible, but we just suck. Like, and they were winning 20 to nothing. So – Yeah. I mean, that's how Nick Saban is with all his Sure, teams. sure. So, um, but yeah. Uh, then we got UCF going to number three. Newly number three. Mm. Cincinnati. We got a non-Power 5 team at number three, folks. You love to see it. Future Big, Te- future Big 12 team at number three. Uh, two fut- These two future Big 12 teams playing each other. UCF. Oh, know, that's former, right. I forgot since he's going to the Big 12, too. Yeah. That's, that's going to uh, be great. A former, um, you know, UCF former darlings of hey, the... They're going to uh, they're gonna walk in and immediately be, just be like... I'm winning the championship every year now. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bye bye. Look, they're just gonna walk in and take everything. These guys are averaging 41 points a game, scoring right now, only allowing 12 points a game. This is incredible. These guys are looking good. They spanked Notre Dame. And they, again, Notre Dame was a convincing win. You want to talk about game wins being convincing? You know, UCF um, former darlings of the 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 group of five, mm. 2017 national champions. Um, yeah, but UCF is kind of falling off. Um, first season under Gus Malzahn, I think he's going to have them moving in the right direction soon once they get to the Big 12. But give me Cincinnati by a lot. I think Cincinnati's really good. I think mm. Desmond Ritter's really good. Um, 
So uh, Will says he's going to play Smash for now. Yeah, we'll see you in a little bit, man. And then yeah, uh, we'll, be, we'll be in there in a minute. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, but yeah, I agree. Since he's going to win it big, I, I don't think that's complicated. I think they're the better team, but they're going to win dominantly. But hey, if you're if you're a Knights fan, uh, you never know. A and M Alabama games happen. Those crazy upsets yeah. do happen. So, but I and wouldn't then, hold your breath on that one. Um, I think they call this one. It's got number five Alabama going to Mississippi State. Mm. The team that just the team that the week before beat the team that just beat Alabama. So let me tell you something, uh, man. Let me hey, let me tell you something. God help the team that has to play Nick Saban's Alabama a week after they lose in the regular season. A and M, y'all slayed the dragon, but y'all might have just woke up a demon. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, man. Like it's they're they're just a hydra. You cut off one head, two come popping out. Now that now it's better. You don't you don't want to have the the angry Nick Saban practice week going into this. There's not there's not anything. I do. Hey. Mississippi State, y'all about to catch the butt whooping of a lifetime. <laughs> well, and you got to look. I mean, they are, you know, they are going to be at home. Uh, the cowboy, the cowbills will be loud. It is. It will be a six o'clock game. It'll be at night. You know, it'll be maroon. Hey, maybe, maybe they'll have. Maybe they get confused. It's like, oh, we're playing a and <laughs> I was gonna say, like, maybe they have some PTSD style maroon flashbacks. And white, a D's <sighs> uniforms. Oh no, maroon and white. I can't handle the. You never know what could happen. It's gonna be very loud, as you know. The cowboy, the cowbells are. Loud as fuck, right? And, and annoying. It, and it, they're annoying. And did I say that you, out loud? Because I meant to. Oh. <laughs> anytime you do something wrong, it's immediately met with. <laughs> so, yeah, give me give me the tide by thirty. <laughs> but, tied by a bunch. Yeah, give me the tide by thirty. But yeah, no, it would be. Hey, you know, it, stranger things have happened. Um, Sean says Cincinnati is a good team. They have a free ride to the playoffs as long as they don't get screwed. Yeah, their toughest test is SMU. Which yes, is their second to last game of the season. Mm, game day which, better go to that game. Which I think they're going to plow right through them at this point, honestly. SMU is um, playing well, though. SMU is playing well. Nothing, you know, I take nothing away from them. I just think Cincy is that good. I think they're the real deal. But yeah, they. I agree. They got a ticket to the playoff. They lose this Notre Dame game, they're out for sure. But they win this, then yeah, it's just a free. And they won the two games that people said, okay, if they win these two games. Yes. Don't make it they, they, against yeah. an Indiana team that doesn't turn out to be the Indiana team that everybody thought Indiana was going to be. Mm -hmm. But then they beat Notre Dame. They beat Indiana and Notre Dame on the road in both of those games. So they, they beat the if teams. If you yeah. then they beat those teams. Um, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Tennessee. Are they man good? in the bowl. Are they good? Are they bad, my guy? Can you please explain to me? You've been kind of on and off they, about Tennessee this year. I want to know what's the truth. I, about I don't think I've said ball. anything about Tennessee this year. Um, <laughs> they put they've put up twenty eight points in the first quarter in back to back games. This offense is rolling with their quarterback Hendon Hooker. Mm -hmm. I think he's playing great. Yep. They wore those black uniforms last week. They look really slick on the field. Um, I really, really wanted them to do the thing they've been doing on Monday Night Football to get Peyton and Eli to commentate this game. How? But, how? how that would be such great television. I but mean, Peyton said no. Peyton, Eli was going to do it, but Peyton said no. Really? Because, yeah. I don't he, know why. I'm sure um, he has his reasons. Yeah. Peyton said no for whatever reason. And I would love also, you got to think about Lane Kiffin's a head coach in the SEC right now mm. at Ole Miss. For a split second, he was the head coach of Tennessee. Back really? in the day. Really? Yep. I don't remember that. Yep. Huh. He was the head coach at Tennessee for a little bit. And then I think he was the head coach of the Raiders. Was he? I think he was the head coach of the Raiders. And then after the Raiders, he went to Alabama. Huh. Or something. It was like Tennessee, then USC, then the Raiders, and then Alabama, and then F-A-F-A-U, and then Ole Miss. And all that time, he had the Napoleon Dynamite tater tot pocket where it was just full of popcorn because my boy can't go anywhere <laughs> without his popcorn. Uh, popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best running joke of the season. I love that. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the thing. Me, Nick, hey, uh, me and hey, hey, look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Hey, hey, hey. Get your popcorn ready. <laughs> so, I, I wish he would do that with every interview now. Yeah. Guy number 13. Ole Miss on the road, mm. explosive offense going to Needham Salient, Neyland Stadium. Tennessee is going to be checkerboarding the stadium like they used to do because they have Ooh. checkerboard in the end zone. Yes, sir. Against a very potent Tennessee offense. Mm -hmm. And Ole Miss doesn't really have a defense. I think this well, game is back and forth. To. Yeah. But Ole Miss just, I mean, Tennessee just scored 62 points last week. So we're going to go back and forth. 
on all this is going to be another old miss versus arkansas no this is going to be a, this is going to be another red river showdown we got an orange team versus a red team one of them yeah. is one of them is literally ut we're getting red river showdown part two this weekend uh but it's going to be yeah. in tennessee though yeah um i think it's going to be a good game but i'm with sean i saw his thing give mm. me the volunteers upset Ooh. victory simply because they're at home taking the bulls and the upset go bigger at home uh, wasn't he at Tennessee when accused Urban Meyer of contracting his student, or contacting his recruits while visiting Tennessee? Maybe so. I have I don't, no idea. I do not remember that, but that that would make sense. Um, interesting. I I got to go with the Rebels here. I think they I think they can get it done. Um, but hey, I, Tennessee I, simply because they're at home and sure neither team is going to be playing defense this game. So mm-hmm. yeah, but you also got to remember this is a Tennessee team that uh, lost a, a Florida team that we can't decide how good they are. And Ole Miss is looking solid literally against everyone, but Alabama. So give me Ole Miss. I like them on the road. I think they're going to be the, uh, I think they're behind Alabama. They're probably the best sec West team this year. Um, I think they're better than Auburn. I think they're better than A&M. They're better than a lot of teams. So give me the rebels. Um, yeah. Should be a fun one. We've had a bunch of top 25 upsets this year. So why not another one? Yeah. Fuck it. Right. Let's just throw another one. Mm-hmm. On the pile. I get it. But I got, I got, I got at least, I got to pick one sober pick here. You feel me? Like I got, to yeah. I got to keep my gravity somewhere. I mean, we everything else has been kind of academic, so I had to throw. Oh sure, you got a <laughs> ballsy one out there. Hey, don't don't tell how the sausage is made, man. We got to keep it. Look, we, the the story is to be interesting, not to be right. You know what I've noticed? That the sidebar. Um, you know what I've noticed What's that, about bro? game day? You know that thing where you watch game day and they all pick one team and then that team loses and you see the tweet later in the day when it's got the team across yeah, the bottom. Yeah, oh yeah. They notice that shit. And I've seen Kirk Herbstreet be like, I'm taking so-and-so because Just I don't want to see the, the picture <laughs> later in the day. Saw, yeah, last week he He's the, done that like three times yeah, now. Yeah, he's like, like, you know what? I'm tired of the... I'll, I'll take him, you know? <laughs> yeah. He, he's, he has... Whether he is... I think he's thrown those picks out there, whether he ends up being right or wrong, simply because he doesn't want to see that picture hey, at the end of the he, day. He did what and I did. Like, he, he, he picked UCLA to be uh, LSU, who's the only guy that picked them to win, that picked them to win earlier in the year. I tipped yeah. my hat. I was like, you got it, man. And sure enough, they won. So... I don't know why this one's on the thing, but we got Michigan, number 10, going to visit, going to visit the Hoosiers. State. Uh, Michigan State, thank you. Uh, I, did, I did that every week. Michigan State's going to visit the Hoosiers. Uh, this one's I don't know why I put me. this one on here. I don't yeah. know. Probably Michigan State by a lot. I just put it on there because wasn't, there wasn't another game to put on there. Michigan State's the heavy the heavy favorite. They're the better team. Um, I think Indiana is actually pretty beat up right now. Obviously, Michigan State is going to be the team to win this week. Uh, give me the Hoosiers. Yeah. Uh, the Hoosiers. <laughs> I was like, let's just see if he's listening. Um, yeah, no. I'm listening. No, give, give me, give me Michigan uh, yeah. State. The but Spartans by a bunch. Yeah, give, give, me, um, give me the Spartans. But, hey, you know, it's it's Big Ten uh, football. I'm, I'm checking on something real quick. Oh, you're fine, man. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty academic one. And then the last let's game. Let's check we got on the okra week. real quick. We got to check on the okra. Oh, I see what they're doing. They are two and four. That? Two and four. I guess they lost again last week. Fifty-five nothing at Valdosta State. <laughs> ah, feels bad, man. The fucking okra. Uh, they get. A, they are on a four-game losing streak. They play at home this week against uh, versus North Greenville University. North Greenville. Never heard of North Greenville University, but let's go okra. Never will again. It's the only time you're ever going to hear about North Greenville University talked about on a college football podcast. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's... Unless North Greenville wants to fly us out and go to a game, then I'll be your biggest <laughs> fan. Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll sell out for all the merch. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah. The big one. The big one, my guy. Which is funny because I can't believe this is the big one this week. But the big, yeah. Kentucky deserves this, man. It's a 2.30 kickoff to CBS 2.30 spot. We got Kentucky going to visit the Bulldogs in Athens. 06-0, the first time Ever a game between two SEC teams that are six and zero, or better. really, really first time ever, in which the, is in the nuts East, to huh? me because they in the East because they've been playing SEC has been playing football for a while. It just goes and to so, show that no one ever wants to win the East. Sean, which says fifty five nothing about Dawson State cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Hell to the yeah. Um, but yeah, man, this is this is this is an interesting matchup. We got uh, the Wildcats who have been suspiciously good. Maybe they're cheating. Very good under, uh, was it Mark? No, yeah, Mark Stoops. Mm. 
brother, former Oklahoma coach Bob Stoops. He's got that Stoops blood in him. Uh, yeah. yeah. Look, so right now, you know, you look at Kentucky's schedule, some of the wins they've got. They beat LSU. They beat Florida. And, of course, Florida was very close. Um, beat South Carolina. Every every game they have won, with the exception of LSU, mind you, has been extremely close. It's been one possession games literally every win they've had except for LSU. I don't know if LSU just gave up that game. I don't know what happened. But this this is a Wildcats team that I think could very easily be – you know, four and two, three and three, five and one. This is this is a team that although has come away with wins, they've all been extremely close. Um, I don't think this one's close because we know how good Georgia is. Would love to see mm-hmm. them pull the upset here, but I think Georgia wins. I, I'm going to take it 55 to zero, honestly. Yeah. I take it back. That's not what's going to um, happen. I, uh, you know, my wife's family is from Kentucky. Um, so I will be cheering for Kentucky. Of course. Um in this game. Uh, but I would like to uh, recruit the help of uh, oh one God. Ray Charles. He's got a bet. <laughs> uh, Ray Charles, what are we doing right To now? help with my pick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough. We're going to get copyright, copyright yeah. claimed. Yeah, uh, right. Georgia by a lot. I don't think this game's close. I don't think Kentucky is in this game at all. Uh, Georgia is at home. Game day and SEC Nation are going to be here. Um, but yeah, Georgia by a whole bunch. You know, honestly, this is, um, I think, I, I, I had earlier that I was thinking the Bulldogs would win it 13-9. to nine. I thought it was going to be an incredibly defensive game. Um, you know, JT Daniels, is that who? Stetson Bennett the fourth, Stet- JT Daniels is still out. Right, right. Stetson Bennett has been for just fine. But it doesn't matter who Georgia's quarterback is because their defense is going to stop you. They're allowing so. five, they're allowing 5.5 points a game right now. That's I ridiculous. think it's they've given up like 33 total points this it's, season. It's absurd. It's absurd. Um, so yeah, give Did me you Georgia. see when they played Arkansas, their linemen literally blocked three people? I didn't crazy. see it. I didn't see it, but that that does not surprise me in the slightest. Um, yeah. No, they're, they're playing big boy football this year. They honestly are the team to beat, as they should be. Um, Sean says Georgia by a bunch. Georgia's best team in the country. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Genuinely, Georgia. I don't think oh, yeah. this is probably Georgia's year. Like, but wouldn't it be some Georgia shit to, to mess around and lose this game and lose to Kentucky? <laughs> to lose this game sixteen. Imagine 10. if Kentucky. <laughs> oh imagine if God. Kentucky wins this hey, game. If that happens, and then it. wins. Imagine if Kentucky wins this game and then wins out the rest of the season and Auburn beats Alabama in the Iron Bowl and it's Ole Miss versus Kentucky in the SEC Championship. Dude. Nuts. Me, fuck it. If that happens, Auburn, if that happens, Kentucky's not a basketball school anymore. They're a football school. <laughs> hey, we, we did miss We one. would truly be in 2007 2.0 if Kentucky beat Georgia. It would be, it, it would be one of a kind, man. It would, it would be that kind of year, which honestly. I'm They're not going to. No, of course not. But my God, it'd but, be great. It would be uh, oh. one, one game we met. One game we neglect, we neglected to mention. Uh, Oklahoma State, the Cowboys, number twelve. Going yeah, to visit, I'm, I'm visit. so stupid. How did I put this game on the list? <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I'm assuming Big Noon kickoff is at this game because it's going to be on Fox. Probably, and it is in Austin. Yeah. Um, number twelve, a, Oklahoma State, going to number twenty-five, Texas. Mm-hmm. The, the Horns, three and a half point favorites, which I believe they were also three and a half point favorites over Oklahoma. Interesting. Yeah. Um, um, we all saw how that I think ended. we're going to be, you know, uh, more Big 12 fireworks. You think so, um, huh? Sorry for not putting this one on the list. I don't know no. why I didn't do that. I got you. That's what I'm here for. Sean says Georgia losing this game is the most Georgia thing ever. Yes. It oh, yeah. surely would be the most it Georgia thing in the so world. It would be so on brand. Game. It'd be so on yeah. brand. I want nothing more than that. That'd be great. It doesn't need to be this game, though. It needs to be like Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. The game they need to lose needs to be Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't, oh, or... I don't just, know who they just, played in the Just East. one of them. Just make it embarrassing, you know? What if Vanderbilt got really good for one week? <laughs> <laughs> if, Van, if Vanderbilt poisons... I would eat a hat live on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just straight up, man. Oh, my God. Um, but, yeah, that's that won't happen. But, boy, it sure would be on brand. Um, Oklahoma State. Cowboys going to visit the Longhorns. Uh, Longhorns, three-and-a-half-point favorites on this one. Who you got, my guy? This, is, this should be an interesting game, especially considering the Cowboys are hot right now. Um, they're winning clutch games. They're getting clutch victories. Their defense is playing outstanding. Uh, and, of course, the Longhorns coming off of that very, not just a, a deheartening loss, but also strange that they couldn't finish it out. So, yeah, what are you thinking, man? Uh, I think Texas is 
I think Texas is good. Like, I think Texas is legitimately good. Their defense just couldn't stop Oklahoma once Caleb Williams came into the game. I haven't watched a lot of Oklahoma State this year. I know they're undefeated. Um, but for whatever reason, Oklahoma, Texas just has Oklahoma State's number. Mm-hmm. So Texas plays very well against Oklahoma State was good last year. And they went and Texas went on the road. And I, yeah, and I, told, I was like, this is the game. I was like, Texas is going to win this game because Texas just has Oklahoma State's number. Oh, yeah. So simply because of that, I'm going to just pick Texas. They're at home. They just came off a loss in the Red River Showdown. And it's going to be crazy. Um, so, you know, this is a tough game. I think it's close, obviously. Um, I think both teams are very talented. Oklahoma State defensively is playing very well right now. Texas, I I, I think we're going to have a rematch between Texas and Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship is what I'm trying to say. I don't know that I agree. Uh, I think Oklahoma State wins this game, and, and here's why. Okay. I think after a loss like you see last week, number one, it's disheartening. It's hard. It's like game five of the 2017 World Series. It's so hard to lose that game and then come back and just be able to get back to normal. It, it's so tough to do it. Um, it anytime the stakes are that high. So, and, and plus, you also have to consider the fact that, that Texas put up 28 in the first quarter of, the, of that game uh, last week and then just stalled out. And the Oklahoma defense, by the way, is not great. We saw what Tulane was able to do against them. We saw what a lot, what basically everyone's been able to do against them. And that's put up a lot of points. They've had to somehow pull out a win because of their offense, but their defense has not been phenomenal. I think offensively, Texas might be struggling. I think the things that are leaking over from practice and Caleb Williams' play might be leaking over into the game some. Maybe he's trying to be a little bit too much Superman. I don't know. Um, but Oklahoma State's defense is one of the better defenses in the Big 12. I think this is a low-scoring game. I got the Cowboys winning at 24-22. Give me the Longhorns going, get, uh, getting a late touchdown and then needing a, needing a two-point conversion, failing, and then the game ending. 24-22, that's my call. You heard it here first. I'll Suck take my that. Dick. That's my call. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. Um, but we'll see. Maybe the Longhorns win it by 50. Who knows? Sean uh, says Texas, but I want 120 combined points in this game. Me too. Yeah, that'd be a lot uh, more fun than what I just said. Yeah. Um, okay, so, Daryl, uh, I saw our thing uh, on our little scroll. The mm. longest touchdown drive of the year. Yeah, we got to talk about this. Happened before. last night. Yes, sir. We got Memphis, mm. and we had Navy at Memphis last night. Memphis came out, scored a... They had like a three-minute drive, and they went down and scored a touchdown. Navy got the ball with 12 minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. Mm. They then proceeded to go on a 21-play, 75-yard touchdown drive. Uh When they scored their touchdown, there was 20 seconds left in the first quarter. They took 11 minutes and 50 <laughs> seconds off of the clock uh-huh. on one drive. It was just run, run. I think there's one pass on it, right? Isn't that what? There's one pass the whole drive. And it's funny because, like, they're not getting yards in every single play. Like, we just, there's a play here. It's, it's, here that it's really got, three yards in a cloud of dust, right? And, and then the one throw is, like, a very short little pass just to get to a guy in space. I mean, it's just the ugliest play, but it works. A little pitch back, little pitch back, little pump, pump, pump. And they're probably going to go for it here, right? It's just three yards, three yards, mm-hmm. three yards. They decide to go for it. What's it going to happen here? Just right up the middle, wrap the gut, little keeper. Beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just old school football. It's just it's just service uh, academy football, and yeah. you'll love to see it. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you look up, and, <laughs> and the first quarter is almost over on one drive. It's, it's, it's just yeah. ridiculous to watch. Crazy. Let the play clock go all the way down. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, another thing, shout out to the, is it PSC Highlights that did, that did that one or is it RS Highlights? It's one of them, but I love both of those channels. I love both of those they, channels too. They make it so easy to follow little things I don't Also, catch. Jeff Foxworthy is going to be yeah. <laughs> the guest pick. Jeff Foxworthy. If you... Blue Collar Comedy Tour fame. If you've ever stared the, at your orange juice because it says concentrate, you might be right next. I can't yeah. believe that guy's still around. I haven't thought of Jeff Foxworthy in 10 years. He got a Georgia Bulldog shirt on. Yeah, yeah. But Big Georgia fan. Although he, although he didn't graduate from there, I need to, I need to let you know that Jeff Foxworthy attended Georgia Tech. Oh no! 
Well, he did not graduate, but he attended Georgia Tech University. Wow. Interesting. Yep. Just wants to, they want hate, to put that they, out there. Georgia Tech and Georgia hate each other, right? <laughs> like, I'm pretty yes, sure that's the. I'm they just do. Saying, like, a a little backwards about this. Their situation. rivalry is literally called clean, old fashioned hate. That's literally the tagline of their rivalry. That's raw as fuck. I need, uh, all right, put, put the kids to bed. We got a not safe for work hour. Give me the uniforms for this week, my guy. They're not like the sexiest thing in the world. I'm not going to lie to you. All right, you, the kids can stay up then. That's fine. Yeah, kids can stay up. Montana. Mm. University of Montana. The Gri- I'll put it in our Discord. Um, the Grizzlies are uh, throwing back to their 2001 national championship team. Ooh. And just wearing some like throwback inspired uniforms, just like a like a dark red maroonish. Oh, that drive was eleven minutes and fifty seconds, Sean. Eleven minutes fifty seconds. Bro, you could twenty-one went, plays. You could have went and took a shower. You could have filed your taxes real quick. You could have ordered. You a legitimately could have like made a sandwich, taken a shower, and made a sandwich. You could come back and Navy would have still had the ball. Yeah, it'd have been fine. You could just walk away. Yeah. It was like gone with the wind, but but it's a drive. It's a football drive. Anyways, these uniforms are nice. Um, I do like the uh, I do like the finish on the helmets. The dark, that dark red and gray, mm-hmm. just clean. Yeah. That, if you do want to see a sexy uniform, I have one of those too. Well, I'd love to see it. Oregon's wearing they're all black this week with the Ooh. nightmare green and the oh clean. Here we go. This is gonna. These are the ones where you gotta put the kid to bed. Kids to bed. Yeah, okay, kid put the kids to bed now. Here we go. Um, Oregon release uniform combination for week seven versus Ca- uh, Cal- the California Golden Bears. They keep, they play tonight. Yeah, they do. Um, some guy named Aaron Rodgers went to school at Cal. Yeah, some guy named Marshawn Lynch went to school at Cal. Maybe they did something in the NFL. I don't know. Maybe they maybe they became famous. Anyways, here's uh, California Bears. Uh, that was the funniest fucking day. Um, Inside joke. Yeah, we pronounce it that way. Great day. Love this. Um, wait a minute. These are yeah. like all the same. This isn't it. I need actually the right one. Hang on. That jersey. I agree, Sean. That jersey is sexy. All right. Yeah, that's the right one. I think it was just this one. Uh, no, I want to. I don't want to disable my ad blocker. I like my ads blocked. Here we go. Um, find a Twitter so we're gonna pull it up yeah mmm clean there we go that's making me feel things right there the wings on the helmets are back for Oregon now yeah no, yeah no, the, wing, the wings are so clean only only Nike only Nike could make the idea of an animal as peaceful as a duck just so threatening and and, and sleek and mean but uh, I mean boy, they the Rice off. Owls wore a, a helmet with a with uh, with some wings on it like that a couple years ago. Rice owl's wing helmet. Now, actually, I've never seen this, so that sounds awesome. Yeah. Okay, it's not it's, as cool as I thought it was, but that's yeah, yeah, it's it's there. It exists. It's rice though, so. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Pretty fun. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's gonna do it. That's gonna be the show, isn't it? That's a quick one. You got a song you want to listen to, Darren? A song. A hype song. I got one. Let's hear yours first. <laughs> you should go listen to Face Off by Tech Nine. Ooh, yeah. Oh, Two other guys rock. and uh, The Rock. Uh, the Rock is a rapper now. I'm, but if you listen to his verse, it's the most... I heard somebody say they were like, this is the most Gatorade commercial thing <laughs> I, I have ever heard in my life. Perfectly describes it, man. It's the best. I like It's, it's such a good... Tech Nine's a great rapper. And then of there's course. like two guys that are like in Tech Nine's like posse. That are rapping, they're very good. But then it's the rock, so you're like, all right. I like I like the old tech song, uh, the old Tech Nine song, through in the trunk and through her in the trunk. I was trying to smash, I like, uh, pass, but math uh, was hella fast. So I threw ass in the trunk. That was a good song. Uh, I like uh, what is it? Uh, I think it's, I think it's Black into the Moon or Black in the Sun or something like that. By that tech sounds Nine. like a Transformers movie, Michael yeah. Bay directing. Yeah, I think it's called Black in, I think it's called Black in the Moon. Black and Catfish. Yeah. Delicious. I had a black and chicken salad the other night for dinner. Oh, don't talk to me about no black and chicken salad. It was del- had shrimp in it too. It was really good. This is stop it. You're killing me. I'm, I, I would love for some like gourmet food. Well, hey, man. It's been a hell of a yeah, show. That was a quick one. I feel like this one was short. One, one eleven. I mean, we're still technically yeah. 11 minutes over, but it's all right. We did fine. Yeah. Hey, it was a good show, man. And it was, uh, look, I just feel so happy. I feel so good. I, um, it's, just, it was it's always great to see an upset. Yeah, man. So, I will be cheering for Kentucky tomorrow, but I don't think they... Also, I, I do want to point out something. I sent you a text message 
last Saturday. And I said, say? Nebraska about to make something shake against Michigan. You know what? I and feel so <laughs> bad for Nebraska. They were at home. They almost had them one against a very a, a very good Michigan team right now. Watch Nebraska get to the end of the season, fuck around and beat Iowa. <laughs> That's the stuff of nightmares, man. I, I ooh, please don't. <laughs> please don't say that. That's not going to happen. Iowa's really that, good. By the way, that oh. Iowa Penn State game was really good. Iowa's good. That's I, we won't say too much more than that. Other than Iowa is very good. Um, yeah, it only ended twenty three to twenty, but like that's Big Ten football. That's Big Ten football, and it's against an that's Iowa Penn football. State team. Yeah, that's that's yeah. so. Yeah. Well, Sean I, says awesome show, guys. See you next week. Hey, all right, Sean. Thanks for dropping by, man. Yeah. Spencer, my boy, always a pleasure. I'm going to leave us on our little weekly, uh, our little sizzle reel, which we're, we might start doing. I'm just going to, I might start. A sizzle making. reel? Yeah, it shows, it shows at, the, at the beginning. You can sit and watch it now on football. Oh, okay. But go ahead and mute yourself. Hey, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe, all those good things. We'll be back the same time next week. Game day, breakfast, podcast, hash brown. We have a lot of names. <laughs> See you guys next week, man. This one is in the book. Play action, Manzo. He's going to go deep right again. And he's got oh, we're good. What a pass. Oh, wow. A wheel route, and he put it like a baton in a track race. And Anaya Smith both down to the bottom. And now Anaya Smith goes back in motion the other way. Down the sideline. What a catch. A.J. <laughs> All out blitz. He knows it's coming. He's got the running back on the wheel route. Let's it go. And boom, like a baton in a track meet.